Hey guys, welcome back. This is Devil Cube Tutorials here with a brand new Cinema 40 tutorial. And we'll be doing some awesome modeling today. And we'll be learning to create this sleigh ball, Christmas ball in Cinema 4D. So the original work was by Access FX over here, where he made a speed art for the ball. And I just commented saying that would it be okay if I made a tutorial? And he was like, go ahead. So I just watched the video thoroughly and made a tutorial. So um, uh, let's go into cinema and get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change the render settings to 1280 by 720. Okay. And then we want to go, the first thing to do is create a sphere. And I'm going to go to display and choose grout shading lines so that we can see the uh, lines over here. And in the sphere settings, I'm going to go to the object and set the type to a hemisphere. And I'm going to the coordinates and set the P rotation to minus 180 so that it's facing downwards. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to go and hit C on the keyboard to make it editable. Or we can click on this button here which says make editable, convert a parametric object into a polygonal object, a shortcut C. And then we want to go and press K on the keyboard to get the knife tool. And we want to select the point selection tool. Now we are going to go into the uh, right view. And we uncheck visible only and we want to go to go and go here and drag to the corners from the center point like that and uh, let's go into our front view and uh, do the same okay and then when we go back to our perspective view we can see that uh, it has been cut but looks like it wasn't cut this side. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to check on visible only and uh, just make a cut over here. I mean, make a few cuts. Okay. Let's go this side. And start making these cuts. Okay, and once we're done with that, we want to go into the live selection and we want to select these four points. So this time, let's go into our right view and we want to uncheck only select visible elements and we want to select this point over here, which selects both the points on the front side and the back side. And we want to go and hold shift and we want to select this middle point. And now when we go to our perspective view, we can see that all the four points have been selected. I'm going to go right click and choose bevel and I'm going to set the offset to 10 and hit enter. After which I will go here to my uh, polygonal set my light selection tool, go back to our front view and we want to go to the edge mode and start selecting some edges and make sure that only set visible elements is ticked off because when we select the lines over here it selects the points there as well. So let's hold on shift, let's grab some points go down, grab some points, go down, grab some points, and let's go to the front view and do the same. Hold down shift, grab the points. Oops, not that. Hold down shift, grab the points, and let's go zoom in here, and this one. Okay. So now when we come back over here, we can see that all the four sides have been selected. And I'm going to go and choose the bevel tool. And I'm going to set the offset to say around 2 centimeters. Actually, let's that increase that to 3 centimeters. Okay, and then we want to go into our polygonal selection. And we can see we have some polygons already selected, but we do not want these polygons. We can go back into our right view. And we can go and click away to deselect everything. And we can click check this one, this point, sorry, this polygon, this one, this one uncheck anything that we don't need. So basically I'm just creating a straight line. It's like this one. Let's go into our front view and uh, let's select these points. Sorry, my bad, not points, polygons. Select, okay. Let's go back to our front view and see if we have got everything. And we want to select this one at the bottom right here, okay. And once we're done with that, we are going to go and choose a subdivision surface and we want to drop the sphere inside the subdivision surface. 
okay and once that is done we're gonna go and choose our uh, extrude inner tool and you're gonna set the offset to say something around 2 or actually let's set that to 1.5 and then let's go and select our extrude tool and we're gonna extrude this in big time to say something around minus uh, 30 okay so now you can see we click away we can see we have this nice belling and edging and smoothness and whatnot everything in there but in the end you know it looks brilliant perfect okay but this is what is the dirty part which we do not want anyways so let's we'll cover that up soon okay so what we want to do next is we're going to select the sphere and we're going to select this edge mode and we're going to go and press U L on the keyboard which gives us the loop selection and let us uh, select this loop and uh, we can choose select boundary loop and we can select that okay so now what we want to do is we want to go and press control on our keyboard and then we can see these two boxes below the arrow point the cursor and let's just drag it up so what it basically does is it creates a copy and then moves it up so we can set this to minus 25 let's hold control and drag it up again to make one more clone and we can set this to probably say 100 minus uh, 47 uh, let's actually set this to minus 50 as well and we want to set here the x and the y to 190 let's drag it once again by holding control and uh, we want to set this to minus 75 sorry let's set this to minus 65 and then here on the x and the z size we're going to set that to 175 and hit enter okay so this is how it kind of looks like okay so let's uh, give some details. So let's go and make a tube. And we're going to set the inner radius to 93, the outer radius to 105, and the height set that to 25. And let's check on fillet and uh, eight, six segments of eight and radius of six. Let's actually set the uh, height to 25. Okay, and then let's just move this up. Okay, so that it you now kind of almost touches it. So if we zoom in a bit closer, we can see it intersecting. So uh, let's see to what extent to till where we can make sure it doesn't intersect. So probably around there. That looks uh, fine. Let's move down, okay. And then we want to go and uh, go and create a sphere again. And I want to choose this as a hemisphere. We're going to go drag this up, and we're going to make this editable. And go into the polygon tool over here. And we're going to go and in the Y, we're going to set this to 115, okay. And we want to bring this down, okay, somewhere like that, okay, and we want to go and put this in a subdivision surface to give it a little bit more rounding and smoothness. And uh, actually we want to set the Y to 100, okay, and then let's go and uh, bring this down like that. You know whatever uh, suits you well whichever you think looks whatever makes you think looks good i mean i think this looks good. let me just bring this down a little bit more okay let's take this uh we can select these two and uh, bring that down a little bit more down okay ha, yeah that looks more better okay so let's uh texture this so we're going to be making a copper kind of texture so let's get into the material editor over here we want to set the color to 225, 100, and 80 for the brightness, the RGB values. 
And we're gonna set the brightness to 25%. Actually, let's set the G to 200. Okay, then we can go into the reflection channel. Okay, we can go and uh, set the R values to 160, the G value to 110, and the B value to 70. We can set the brightness of this to 50. We can check on additive. Let's set the bl blurriness to 10%. We can go to texture, add a fresnel. Let's get into the fresnel texture. Okay, so in this white color, we're going to replace that with RGB values of 255 for the R, uh, 230 for the G, and 195 for the Z. So, oh, sorry, the uh, B. And we have these default colors which I just wrote down for reference. And on the black one, we're going to set that to 112 and uh, 69 for the G, and we're going to set that to zero. Okay. So here, in the mixed trend, we're going to set that down to 70%. Now let's go to the specular and we want to set the height of this to 170 to give it a bright specular. We can go and choose the mode to metal and actually let's choose it to plastic that would give us a better one and we can go here and change the type of this to a torus, no, uh, a knot. Uh, that would do or a not GI, no not a GI, let's choose, I don't know what they call that. Uh, a double torus, yeah, that. So if we set that to metal, we get something like this. So metal or plastic, that's up to you. So let's take it and drop it on all of these textures. Let's close this up. And uh, one thing we want to do is we want to go and choose a floor. So let's drop in a floor and uh, I'm just going to go and press Alt G on the keyboard to group them. And I'm just going to go and rotate it and uh, place it on the floor. Or just place it nicely on the floor. Okay. And then we can go to our content browser and we can go to the HDRI Grayscale or Like It Pro. Choose an overhead soft box. We can uh, go to the coordinate settings and we can bring this down. Something like that. We can also go and uh, press R on the keyboard and uh, rotate it. And uh, we can go to the soft box settings over here and we can shrink it down. So uh, let's see, we can uh, scale down, keep the width as to 1000 and probably set the height to 300 or uh, let's set this to 1500 and the height to say around 250 and then let's go and uh, create a sky object and I'm going to load a material in the luminance channel okay and I'm going to go and uh, Drop it on the sky. Choose cinema 40 tags, compositing tags, scene by camera. Let's go make another material. And let's drop in a wood texture. Let's close this up. Let's put this on the floor. Okay, so once we have applied the texture to the plane, uh, we're going to go and change the projection of it. So let me just uh, s you know, get my camera angle. Uh, like that. Okay, and I'm going to go to this floor and press T on the keyboard. And uh, we're going to scale it out. Oh, actually, uh, let's go and create a plane in that case because I'm not able to scale it. And uh, we'll take the plane and press T on the keyboard. And then we're going to scale that out till it covers the whole um, scene here. Let's just uh, a little more higher. Okay, that looks perfect. Okay, okay, next what we want to do is we want to select the text tag over here and we want to check on seamless. Okay. 
and then we can do is we can reduce the length to 50 by 50 or uh, we can reduce it even more to say something like 10 by 10 which gives us more amount of more detail so if we go here and we we'll choose uh, ambient occlusion and then we choose global illumination I'm just going to set this to low for the purpose of the uh, explanation anti-aliasing we're going to set that to best and then we hit to render and it is preparing as you can see here So here how it is how it looks like after creating a render and uh, I just put in a little bit of reflection over here on the material so you can see this little bit of uh, reflection and you can increase the uh, more reflection to give a more glossy look to the floor so uh, this is pretty much it for the creating the ball um, so hope you guys learned something new and uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial and uh, please like share comment and subscribe and uh, hope to see you in other future tutorials Till then, take care, bye-bye, and have a good day.